SATA connectors and power. Here they are. There we go. Secured and nice. Now there is a special key you need to press to get into BIOS. Please select boot device. And then you'll need to go and select Windows Boot Manager. And uh, of course you want to boot from your SSD or the drive you usually use. So for example, this thing, P1, this is my uh, hard disk where we are going to uh, like uh, wipe and use the storage. And this is the current SSD. So if you just understand like what brand and what it's called, it's uh, easy to select. Now we are into Windows and we're going to start Disk Manager. So right click on the Windows icon and select Disk Management from here. Or find it via Control Panel or Search. So here we have all the drives and now we need to find out which drive we're going to delete. Because if you do this with the wrong drive, you will not be very happy. So one th simple way to do it is of course go to go here. You can see this is C, D, J, G, F and you can browse which one is like yours uh, that you usually use. And of course you can see this with a little flag on, the C drive. This is of course the drive you booted from. This is the SSD. And uh, just check through them one time more to make sure so that you're sure which one you delete because this is actually the same uh, install of Windows on two different drives from when I moved it over the entire system like just everything with Mac room reflect So they're very like this is like an old version of my earlier system So that's why it can be confusing if you also have done this So just make sure that you booted from the correct drive and if you did you will know that it's not C drive because this is the one we booted from so disk one is the thing we want to delete and uh, in earlier tutorials I have shown you how to do this with command prompt but since PowerShell is kind of the new thing or it's not very new but whatever we right click on the Windows flag and we start Windows PowerShell admin uh, it works as well with command prompt as PowerShell and you can search it up if it's not there all right so inside here we write in disk part in one word and here we go disk part fantastic and inside disk part we write in list disk and here we have all the disks and do remember select the correct disk if you are trying to delete the disk you're currently using it will stop you and you can't do that you have to delete uh, the system you haven't booted from because if you're trying to delete the system you've booted from it will say no uh, we are going to delete disk 1, which is not a drive we have booted from. So here we write in select disk 1. And there we go. And we write in list partition or list part. And here we have all the partitions. And now we will select the partition we want to delete. Select part 1. And now we will write in delete part. After selecting it, we write in delete part override and you can see it's gone. So we need to select the next partition. So select part two. Delete part override. And now it's gone. All right, and now we go select Part 3, delete part override. All right, very nice. So, what partitions are there? All right, here we have the fourth partition, the last one. So, we will select part 4, delete part override. And there we go. Now all the space is unallocated, very nice. And now we can go into Disk Manager and just create a new simple volume because it's much easier to do it from here than to just go and uh, do it inside the uh, disk part, which is possible, but just not convenient. All right, so how do we do this? Well, if it's a hard drive, a spinning disk hard drive, you can set this to the maximum amount, which is preset. If it is an SSD, Take this number into a calculator, remove 10% and put it back in and you got a good 
10% unallocated, which will make it survive a lot longer. Smart thing to do. Anyways, we now click next and uh, we can select another uh, drive letter if we wish. And then we can just uh, click next. And here we can see format this volume with a new following settings. NTFS is what you want to use if it's going to sit in a Windows uh, um, computer. And here we have allocation unit size. Uh, you can leave it out at default. But uh, if you're going to have very small files on it, a lot of small files, um, you can save um, disk space if you choose the lowest value. And if you're going to have really big files, which I'm going to have, like movies, pictures and music, you can set it to the maximum level. And it will be a little uh, less space inefficient, but uh, a little bit faster. It's really small um, difference, but you know, that's what it does if you ever wondered. Make a catchy name for your hard drive and then you click perform a quick format. And uh, if you are not going to use this hard drive, uh, if someone else are going to use this hard drive uh, after you, you want to uncheck perform a quick format. Because if you do perform a quick format, uh, you will be able to recover files that are uh, on this drive that we have uh, like made unaccessible using uh, disk part. And I have tutorials on how to recover lost files and basically what it does is it lists all the files that can be recovered from the hard drive and then you can recover them. So uh, of course I know what's on this drive and I'm going to use this drive so I will do a quick format. If we uncheck this it will take a lot longer time but um, the data will get deleted. Alright uh, review your settings or not and click finish. Fantastic. Now we have our uh, drive. Ta-da! Beautiful, here it is. Our source is connected to the computer. In any case, I hope this little video helped you and if it did, please leave a like and I'll see you next time. This is your host, Jim Rism, and we're signing out.